This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri on Pulse95. Yes, hello and welcome to the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri. I'm your host, coming everything sport, international and local. Thank you very much for tuning in. And yes, we are talking about sports, health and fitness today on the Halftime Show in the Heart of Sharjah on Pulse95. Okay, so I normally do get a lot of feedback from uh, the listeners and, and one of the people that actually said to me, listen, you've got to talk about this 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 craziness that's happening in the world of YouTube versus boxing. So Floyd Mayweather is facing Logan Paul in a boxing match. Mustafa, your wishes come true, my man. We're going to be talking about that today. We've also got a guest that came on the show, Dereen Barbar, who's the first uh, female Arab amputee athlete. Now, she was amazing. Like, she was really good. She actually attempted to break the World Guinness Book of Records in doing a wall sit yesterday. So we're talking about if she got it or not on the show today for Darin Barbar, who's, by the way, she was amazing. I met her family as well afterwards, and they were so nice, um, you know, after the interview the other day. And uh, it was cool, man. She's a good person, very down to earth. She's obviously been through a lot, but it was really nice to be able to see her yesterday do some good things. So we're talking about that. Another person who's been on the show is Brian Ortega, the UFC phenomenon. Now, he is in a TV series at the moment now against another fighter called Volkanovski, if I can say that properly. <laughs> We're going to be talking about them as well and taking all your questions. Let's give a couple of shout Shout out to Mustafa, Nina, Sarah, Masoud, Terry, Dr. Rina, Mustafa, of course, Fahad, Masoud, Ilya, Samuel Afu from the Ghana national team as well. Um, thank you very much for connecting. And I'm sure, Florin, you'll be here anytime soon. Right, okay, let's take a break. Um, this is from a, a local artist called Real SQ. I love this track. Salamu alaikum. Here we go. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri on Pulse95. Yes. Salam, welcome back to the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri. I am your host, coming everything sport, international and local. Wow, we got some cool faces as well on the Instagram Live or even if you're tuned in at YouTube on Pulse95 Radio. Thank you very much for spending your Saturday afternoon with me wherever you are around the world, whether it's 95FM, Pulse95Radio.com, our app, Sharjah Broadcasting Authority, or if you're chilling at home watching us live on YouTube. Okay, so if, you, if we date back, actually, I think it was a couple of months now, we had the first Arab amputee athlete. Uh, Darin Barber, who was on the show. She was amazing, man. She was really cool, very down to earth. I got a chance to meet her family and she was super sweet, right? But what was really cool about her story is that, you know, it just seemed like nothing phased her. She'd obviously been, uh, you know, been through a lot with the war. She'd lost her leg. There were so many factors, but I just loved her, her energy and her determination. So yesterday, she was attempting to break the world record for the longest um, chair or static wall sit. So for those that don't know what a wall sit is, normally your back is against the wall, you're bending your knees and you're kind of in a seated position, but you're not actually sitting on anything. So that's why they call it a wall sit. Now, she went and tried to break the record and officially we can say here on the halftime show, she broke it. Yes. So happy for her. So happy for her family. This is huge because... We often kind of make excuses ourselves, you know, we kind of say, ah, oh, not feeling that great today, feeling a bit lazy. And then you look at Darin and she's just like smashing these records. So I was very, very happy for her. Um, at 43, she's an inspirational amputee athlete and she broke the world Guinness Book of Records for the wall set as an amputee. Um, two minutes and 8.24 seconds at Champs. She did it yesterday uh, at a sports club. and. It was it was so good to see because there's a the thing about her doing it in June, which I was reading up on, is she lost her leg in June 1993 at the age of 15 uh, due to bone cancer. She spoke about that on the show, and yesterday she went and broke the record. Same month, 28 years later, and she's back to win that battle. And she was saying how she was really not just doing it for herself, but doing it for a lot of people to inspire them to kind of break goals, smash goals. And and I kind of saw that and I thought, wow, man. Like, you know, there are days, obviously, we feel a little bit off and that's fine. But you see Dereen doing these things and just with her approach. And I think that's what it comes down to. It comes down to approach. We all have the capabilities of doing these things, 
but not all of us do them and sometimes you see people like that and it just kind of motivates you it gives you that kind of step you know so congratulations Dari Barbar and also her family as well who must be so stacked to you know uh, see her do such great things you know um, if you didn't catch the show by the way the whole episode is on YouTube if you type in Pulse95 radio and head over to our channel and go to the halftime show she's there and she's uh, she speaks a lot about her experiences how she's reached the stage that she's at what she uses her energy on as well so really really cool definitely definitely check that out okay right coming up next Mustafa you asked for it so I am delivering the Boxer versus YouTuber, which is going to happen. It is actually going to happen. One of them is undefeated and has a crazy record. But why is he doing it? And will it affect his record? Find out next on The Only Place to Be at 3, The Halftime Show on Pulse95. This is The Halftime Show with Omar Adouri on Pulse95. Yes. Salam. Welcome back to The Halftime Show with Omar Adouri. I'm your host, Kamir sport international and local hope you're safe and sound wherever you tuned in around the world whether it's 95 fm pulse95 radio.com our app charger broadcasting authority you can tune in at home watching us live on youtube okay so you know when you normally have like regular listeners and stuff like that you, you kind of take what they say on board and uh, um, a good friend of mine mustafa goes to the same boxing gym as me he came in the other day with a smile on his face he's like are you gonna actually talk about Mayweather versus Logan Paul and I said to him maybe I don't know and he's like is this actually happening like it, it has the world gone crazy the one of the best arguably pound for pound boxing fighters against a YouTuber and I said Mustafa let me look into it man because I, I know it's going to happen I thought it was a bit of fun really and I'm like, why? Why would he do that? So I did some research. I watched a bunch of shows, uh, listened to a lot of podcasts to see, like, what is going on here? Now, Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul face off on Sunday. But why will this fight be different to any boxing fight? Knockouts or nothing was a headline on one of the things I checked out. And as we discuss the rules for this fight, you might know why he's doing it. How many ounce gloves are they going to be fighting under as well? Because you got to realize, you know, these are all little small factors you got to take on board. And are knockouts legal? But more importantly, will there be any judges? Now I start to think, hmm, no judges for a boxing match. What is, go- <laughs> what is going on? What is next for us to be thinking? Floyd Mayweather is taking on Logan Paul. The research that I've done now shows that there is, it won't affect Floyd Mayweather's record. Floyd Mayweather is still retired from boxing, but he's not retired from entertainment. So this is classified as entertainment. So here are these, it's mind boggling. I know Mustafa, just chill, I haven't finished yet. There's so many factors here that makes you think, "Mm, that doesn't make sense. So the biggest news is that there won't be a winner declared at the end of the fight. So now we're starting to do more on the entertainment side. So it's kind of got like a WWE feel to it. But then again, knockouts are allowed. So if you knock the person out, it's it's going to happen, right? So there are knockouts allowed. And even if there's no official winner, there could still be a stoppage. And this could either come by knockout, which is legal, or at the referee's discretion, okay? How many minutes each round? Three minutes. How many rounds? Eight. That's still a long time. Someone that's 44 years old coming in against Logan Paul, that's a long time, okay? First, it was 10-ounce gloves, then it was 12-ounce gloves. Now it's back to 10-ounce gloves. So now they're going to be fighting with 10-ounce gloves. So there's another thing for you in terms of, you know, the facts that we're coming into. Weight limits. Now, if you look at the size of Logan Paul against Floyd Mayweather, you're probably thinking... How is this even allowed? That's why it's an exhibition match because they can't go in at the same weight class, obviously, because there's too many different variables there. So by contact, by, by, by contrast, Mayweather, known as one of the greatest pound for pound fighters of all time, is expected to tip the scales at 160 pounds. That will be him. Logan Paul is expected to with a maximum of 190 pounds. So that's 30 pounds heavier than Floyd Mayweather. Or he faces a fine of $100,000 
for every pound he goes over. Let that sink in there for a second. A hundred thousand dollars for every pound he's over that limit. There's a lot of money being thrown around here and this madness that's happening is really getting people talking. So there's you've seen his brother get involved by taking his hat. If you haven't seen that, by the way, it was, it was hilarious. It, it, um, Jake Paul, who arguably uh, is seen by many as the better boxer than Logan Paul, showed up to one of their press conferences and took the hat off Floyd Mayweather's head and said, got your hat, <laughs> like a little kid, and ran off. So that was the first part. The second part is he untied his shoelaces while he was on stage. It's a lot of kids' games here. Now, here's the only thing that I didn't like with this whole situation. It got a bit messy when they started bringing in personal things towards each other. So um, Floyd Mayweather, obviously trying to sell the fight, said something to Logan Paul by saying, uh, I'm going to get you back for what you did to Japan. And this, this is a whole controversy about a video that Logan Paul did and it was quite offensive towards the Japanese. And then um, Logan Paul responded something about Floyd Mayweather's uh, wife who passed away. And that again, you see, with that kind of stuff, there's so many things where I just kind of think, look, I get you're trying to sell the fight. The hat move by Jake Paul, that was enough to sell it because it got violent, it got physical. They, there were so many things. And a lot of people in boxing are very offended by, you know, what's going on here. But at the same time, I personally have seen, and Mustafa, you know who I'm talking about, I've seen credible boxing coaches, ones that I respect, say, you know what, if he actually catches him, <laughs> athletically, if he catches Mayweather, if Logan Paul catches Mayweather, and eight rounds is a long time, anyone that knows boxing, one round of three minutes is a long time. Logan Paul's background is wrestling. So putting that weight and using that weight to benefit him is going to be very key. Now, there can't be any dirty boxing. I'm sure the referees have been warned. I'm sure Mayweather's got a very good idea of what to expect. But again, this is what I'm saying. It's, it's entertainment now. It's no longer a boxing match. It's an entertainment fight. Can I call it a fight? It's an entertainment bout. I, I don't know what to call it, but at the same time, am I going to be watching? Yes, I probably will be watching. I will be watching because I want to see what madness comes out of this contest. So yeah, are you going to be watching? And if you are, who do you think is going to actually come out of this in one piece? Text me on 4215 at the Salat or do or slide into my DMs during the break. The music's been on point today, um, so I'm going to enjoy this. Here's a little break, some music, and be right back. Enjoy. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri on Pulse95. It sure is that time. It's the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri. Thank you very much for tuning in on 95 FM, Pulse95 Radio in the heart of Sharjah. Okay, right. So if you're just tuning in and you missed the show, listen, you missed a great start to the show a lot of stuff we spoke about we spoke about uh, Darin Berba the first uh, female Arab amputee athlete to break a world record Guinness Book of Records for the wall sit the, 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 the longest wall sit she's done and that was amazing man so shout out to her and her family we've spoken about all this I don't even know, is it mayhem? Is it madness? You know, uh, Floyd Mayweather is set to fight, you know, Logan Paul uh, in a, a boxing match. It's safe to say, I'm, I'm really careful with my words since he said that he's retired from boxing, but he's in entertainment. So that's going to happen. Um, and one of the guests we've had on the show, actually, Brian Ortega, who is um, a UFC athlete, a very, very talented UFC athlete, who switched up his approach. Um, he was on the show actually last year, and we were talking about um, sports science and mindset and how he's he's changed things around. He was kind of like in the wrong crowds and he was with the wrong people and things like that, and he's really switched all that up now. So we were talking about that, and um, and he's actually now on a show called The Ultimate Fighter, if you haven't heard of it. You know, it's... Um, it's really interesting where they, they put these fighters in a house and different weight classes, obviously, and they get to fight each other for a contract with the UFC. Now, there's been a lot of champions to come out of this. And for those that don't know, the Ultimate Fighter is it's like a... 
it's like an American Idol for fighters. Except instead of singing, you get to fight. And the winner obviously gets a contract and a lot of fame. Um, there's been 28 seasons of The Ultimate Fighter. And you might recognize uh, fighters such as Forrest Griffin, Nate Diaz, Tony Ferguson, and Kevin Gastelum. Coming out of The Ultimate Fire. Yeah, that's right. Coming actually out of The Ultimate Fire, which is crazy. Um, 28 seasons, obviously, we've had that. And that's been really cool. But this time, it's uh, Brian Ortega against Alexander Volkanovs- Volkanovsky. I can't I can say that today. <laughs> Hopefully I can say that today. That's going to make the outtake real for sure. Um, and it, deb- it started on June the 1st. So people were really anticipating this after a two-year break. A lot of people, you know, were missing this and were saying, oh, well, we want to, we want to watch the show again. Well, Dana White's made it happen again. And he's got these two fighters who are coaching these two teams. And one thing, I, now I start to watch Brian Ortega very closely because he's, He's come out and said, I'm one of the best coaches in the world. And I thought, wow, like to have that kind of confidence. And I know he's a fantastic fighter. He said, I've been coached by the best, so I can implement that and I can help others. And straight away, I was into it. I was into the show. I was thinking, you know what? I can't wait to see this. This is going to be, this is going to be good. It's going to be very, very good. So I watched the first episode. Um, make sure you watch it, actually. It's a good, good start to the show. And just seeing how they... They have their first picks. There's the quiet ones. There's the outspoken ones. There's the ones that kind of just have their head down and they're just, you know, focused. And it's nice to see, you know, how each one of them is is very different in in their approach. So yeah, so check out the Ultimate Fighter, uh, the new season. And I'm I'm looking at Brian Ortega versus Volkanovski when they do eventually fight, and that's going to be really good because for quite a while now, you know, Brian Ortega has been someone that has aspired to be the best and has been very close. He's, he's had an injury. They were supposed to fight before and then Volkanovski got uh, COVID, so they had to delay that. But I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes about, especially with uh, with Brian Ortega. But what do you guys think? Firstly, will you be watching The Ultimate Fighter? And secondly, when those two fight, who's going to win? Text me on 4215, it's a salat or do, or send to my DMs. Florin is saying, nothing saying welcome to the ring like a good right cross. The YouTube will be silenced. Wow. We got people kicking off on the Instagram live whilst Aisa said that, you know, Logan gets the win for YouTube. Florin responds, right? Find out more after the break. Here's some major laser and we'll be right back with the final segment. Don't go anywhere, folks. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri on Pulse95. Sure is that time. It's the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri. You know, there's something about the... The Adan, when it goes off, and especially the, the gentleman's voice who, who does the Adan for Sharjah. Amazing, amazing. Really, really cool. I just got goosebumps. Really, really cool. Uh, okay, so if you're just tuning in on the show, what did we have today? We had a couple of things, actually. We had our very own Dereen Barbar, who uh, was the first uh, Arab female amputee athlete who broke our, our world Guinness Book of Records uh, record for uh, the longest wall set, actually. Uh, which is amazing, man. Really, really good. I'm very, very happy for her and her family. We also spoke about the madness that's going on with Floyd Mayweather against Logan Paul. Obviously, people having their own opinions on, uh, on the Instagram live. Florin saying, you know, what's going to happen here? And 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 Aisa saying, you know, one for the YouTubers. So, I don't know. I, I just feel if Jake Paul was up against uh, Mayweather, we'd probably get a much heated... Uh, fight and also a more emotional fight because he wasn't even involved in this fight and he got under May with the skin. Can you only imagine if uh, <laughs> if if he actually fought him? Um, that was one thing. And then having seen the interviews as well earlier in the press conference, um, Mayweather was talking and he mentioned McGregor again. So I wonder if that's going to be coming up soon because McGregor has a fight against Dustin Poirier and. You know, McGregor can't be taking too many losses right now. And at the same time, you know, uh, one has to ask the same question about Conor McGregor. Why is he still fighting? You know, these guys are multi, multi millionaires who don't need to put their body, uh, their heads in that kind of situation. So that was, I'm just thinking Mayweather against McGregor. Now that would sell. I'll tell you that now. If they're looking for YouTube fights, that would definitely hit the YouTube charts. Um... And we also spoke about the Ultimate Fighter, which is a, it's like an American Idol for fighters, where they're all in a house, they get together, 
um, to compete in challenges to face each other and then the winner gets a contract with the UFC and there's been some fantastic people coming out of there um, from the actual house itself but the coaches are Brian Ortega and Volkanovski and for those that, that know and caught the show with Brian Ortega it was very interesting to see how he switched his whole philosophy on fighting, on training uh, in that so I, I think that's that's cool um, Ace is saying Floyd Mayfeather well, I'll tell you one thing. If that's the case, he's done really well not to get a loss on his record. And he got really agitated at the reporter who asked him or implied that he sometimes misses uh, fighting the fighters at the right time. And he got very, very agitated. And he said, you know, uh, I fought everyone. I beat everyone. Anyone's in front of me that's played. And the, and the reporter said something to him which got a response and he said yeah well sometimes you know you don't fight them when you're supposed to fight them and he said if you're talking about Pacquiao I'm two years older and I fought him and beat him comfortably now I'm sure the Pacquiao fans uh, you know who are here like ah, uh, uh, who's in the background and uh, and Ray who's listening on the Instagram live will probably disagree with that but you want to see the fights at the right time and that's why I think Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua you wanted to see that now and now Tyson Fury has to fight Deontay Wilder because of the core arbitration and that means AJ will fight you sick and again any kind of damage boxing is it's not something that you know you can always uh, rely on to come out safe from it it's it's a it's a brutal sport it's a science definitely but it's a brutal sport if you get a you know knocks to the head sometimes it takes ages to recover if you if you lose mentally it takes you ages to recover as well so coming in with that kind of confidence where you face someone and you're undisputed and they're undisputed and you it's a unification of titles that's different to coming in where the body's taken you know a lot and and these and these fighters put themselves in it that's why they get paid the big bucks but yeah um a lot of things you know a lot of things to look forward to this weekend we've also got the euros by the way there's a lot of a, a lot of sport coming up and i know we said you know when the premier league is up what are we going to do well, the Euros are coming up. UFC, as Fahad reminded me, is next week. You know, uh, the Copa America started yesterday as well. We got that. You know, you've got the tennis that's coming up. Rugby as well, for all those that are interested. Um, the basketball is happening at the moment. You know, um, cricket as well going on at the seven games. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of different things. So I, I guess it comes down to, especially with the Naomi Osaka st- stuff that happened last week, it's kind of like cooled off a little bit because that got really heated a lot of people were discussing you know was she right to step down have they won now that she stepped down she stepped down for mental health reasons uh is she now a target will other people emulate her by stepping down there's a lot of factors here but i think like the like the black lives matter uh movement i think people have to stand by her in order for it to actually be relevant otherwise it just kind of fades away um he says saying Floyd waffles too much and in this match Floyd gonna bottle it well let's see there's no there's no winners in this match by the way he said I don't know if, if you caught the show earlier but results wise and judges wise there won't be any judges unless it's a knockout that's gonna be that's gonna be rare um, former Chelsea uh, rejection from sorry from Chelsea rejection to England regular how Declan Rice has bounced back to become a key figure in the Euros. That's a very good point. Absolutely. Uh, can you bring up the Premier League player of the season this week? Yes, we've got that. And we've got the team of the season. We can talk about that as well. Yeah, guys, keep keep those comments coming in, by the way. When you, whenever you want me to go into something like a topic that you might have found and you want us to talk about on the show, please, please do text us on 4215. Or as you did, Mustafa. You know, just uh, reach out to me and let me know and I'll do my research. Definitely spent a couple of hours trying to prepare for the show. And, and, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. That is full time on the Halftime Show. Have an incredible Saturday. I hope you've enjoyed yourself as much as I have. And I'll see you very, very soon. Peace and love, people. I'm out. If you liked this episode of the Halftime Show, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.